Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Welcome to Super Agents Live. My name's Toby Salgado, and thank you for tuning in today. On this show, we talk with the most influential voices in real estate. Okay, today's show is pretty good. Here's what we talk about. We talk about negotiation, how to get all your listings into bidding wars. We also talk about pricing strategies. How, you know, what, how do you do that? What, what is the game you should play or, or the negotiation, the tactic, the strategy you should use to get your client the most money for their house in the shortest amount of time? We spend a lot of time talking about marketing. We talk about what this person did when she started, what she still does today, and what works. What, we talk about optimal prospecting. Before we get to that, let's hear from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard, or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Okay, a little housekeeping before we get to the content. Um, if you don't know, if you're new, welcome. Uh, but we have a hashtag for this show. It is Unpack That Idea. It, it is a big follow train. We have a very, very active uh, tribe on Twitter. Um, so just uh, go ahead and tweet out that. I will follow you. I encourage everybody in our tribe to support one another and to follow to follow each other. Um, for the live event, we had it scheduled for June 19th. We rescheduled it. to. We're going to do it the third week in July. And what it is, it's a mastermind. It's where I'm going to have 10 or 12 people from the show, from the audience. Um, we're going to, it's 150 bucks. We're going to rent a suite uh, somewhere at some hotel here in uh, San Diego, maybe, maybe like the W or something kind of get, kind of get fancy out there um, and cater some food. And we're just going to, again, we're, it's going to be a, a all day mastermind. We'll start at nine. We'll finish at five, that sort of thing. Um, if you are looking to level up, I have one more spot in my coaching roster. So uh, again, if you want to level up, take your business to the next level. Shoot me an email and uh, and let's chat. Let's see if we're a good fit. Um, lastly, uh, iTunes, if you are so inclined, if you feel like you like this show and you have not left a review, I would love it. I would love it and I would appreciate it. it every single new review we get helps the show. We are number 52. Last I looked, I should look again. 52 in Stitcher for business. I mean, not only do we crack 100, we're number 52 in the world. That feels great. And look, this is great content. The only way new people are going to find this is if uh, if we can push it up to the top. I think in uh, in um, on iTunes we are uh, we are like in the 70s or something. But so look, that's good. Still top 100. Um, one last thing, I just want to wet your appetite a little bit. Uh, um, you know how? Look, everybody would love to sell 10 million dollar houses right? Beverly Hills kind of stuff. Um, um, in terms of products, you know, I've been, I, you know, I've created some, I still have not allowed you to buy them because I, I'm still working on the stinking membership site. 
Uh, developers. I wish I was a little bit tech savvy. Anyhow, um, but for last month and a half, I've been working on the equivalent of Beverly Hill stuff. This is the thing that if you can literally dominate your marketplace and, and it's not new. This is something that, that, uh, that, uh, people are using today, but I'll explain more once it comes out. But listen, this is, if you really, really want to create a compelling and giant business, Two weeks from now, hopefully we'll do the unveiling and uh, you'll see what other top producers are doing. And, f- and everybody else has been locked out of it. It'll, trust me, it'll make sense once you actually hear what it is. Okay, uh, that's it. Hey, let's get to the show. Hey, Carol, thanks for taking the time out today. I appreciate you coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Hey, so listen, I have given a, a brief overview of your background, uh, but maybe take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and your business. All right. Um, I've actually, this month is, believe it or not, my 40th year in real estate. Oh, my gosh. Which is amazing. Amazing. I I don't feel that old. (laughs) But uh, as I tell my clients, I got my license when I was 10. (laughs) What? So, yeah. Just joking. Okay. (laughs) I got it. (laughs) Otherwise, I start doing the math and trying to figure out how old I am. It took me a second. (laughs) But I don't feel as old as I am. And... um, I, I just love what I do, and I've loved it for 40 years, and I'm going to keep on doing it until I can't do it anymore. You know, I'll tell you, that's, that's really the trick, you know, is, is finding something that, you know, finding your passion or finding your swing, you know, the, the thing that you just love to do. And, and this is it for me. And I still get a thrill every time I sell a house to someone. I, I, it's very exciting. Uh, whenever I make a deal, I, it's, you know, and I'm very competitive and I, I'm, it's, I'm always challenged and I'm always looking for new and innovative things to do. And I've always studied throughout my career to better myself. And, uh, well, so listen l- uh, real quick. So, so you're competitive, uh, you get a thrill and you like, cause you, it, what, what is that thrill? Is it, do you love doing the deal? Do you love negotiating? Is that the thrill or is the thrill for you seeing somebody, you know, uncovering a new chapter in their lives? All of it. I, I get a thrill from the negotiation, uh, which I, you know, feel that I'm very skilled at and, I get a thrill when we close escrow and I hand the keys to the buyers, uh, when I deliver the check to the seller, uh, you know, when we, we got them a great price for their property, and I know that I was instrumental, you know, in making those things happen. So it's, it's still very thrilling and exciting for me, and I, I just I love the thrill. So, so let's talk about um, – um, so you love the thrill. You know, I, I wonder if you love the chase. But let's talk about negotiating. You, you know, you are a skilled negotiator. You, you believe that about yourself. Where along the process do you really think your negotiation skills make a difference? I, I just think I've just have a lot of experience and, you know, have done so many deals that uh, I've actually taken some negotiation courses. And uh, I took one at Pepperdine University that's actually taught at their school of law. And many attorneys uh, go there when they want to be arbitrators or mediators. So, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago I took that course and, you know, learned some tricks and things. And just just by doing deals over the years, just, you know, knowing how to, you know, manipulate. We, we're in a market right now where we're getting a lot of multiple offers. Yeah. And just being able to, you know, manipulate those offers and, you know, you sort of fake people out and, you know, nobody knows what the other person is offering. And, yeah. and I mean, I have four offers sitting on my desk right now uh, on a property that I just listed and the seller's coming in this afternoon to review them. And, you know, one offer is much higher than the other three, but the other three don't know that. And it's, it's just, it's how you work it. It's, you know, it's just, it's a skill that you learn from doing a lot of deals. So, so your job, your job as an agent, obviously you need to walk people through the process, but your job is to sell the house in the shortest amount of time for the most amount of money. Absolutely. And, now, and that's an old saying that, that, you know, goes way back from when I first got my license. Okay. So, um, and, and my point is this, what, tell me what you would do. You have, you have four, four offers. Uh, let's assume they're all as pre-qualified as, as the other one. Let's just assume that, um, one is much higher than the other three. What do you do? Tell us how you well, get. 
So the seller's coming in, and I, I really I explain to the seller all the options that they have. If they like one one buyer more than any of the other offers, you know they have the option of accepting that offer, and they don't even have to deal with the other people. If they want to try to drive the price higher, they may may want to counter to everybody, uh, and you know of course they run the risk of losing somebody in the process. Um, in this particular situation, one offer really stands out a lot more, and the seller's elderly, and they're offering her uh, staying in the house after escrow for two months and some other things that really appeal to her. They wrote a beautiful letter, and I think she's going to be inclined to go with that offer, but, I mean, I will explain the process to her and and see if she wants to try to push the other offers up and, you know, may, maybe counter at a higher price. But, you know, it will be up to her. But I obviously counsel her and will counsel her and let her know, you know, my thoughts of, you know, how I think she should handle it. Sure. Okay. And I just want, I'm just trying to get at, I want to know how you get the, the, the highest offer. So let me, let me, let me tell you what I would do. And I've, and I've, I've never been an agent, but I've bought mm-hmm. and sold lots and lots of properties. I mean, and really I've probably sold more real estate than, than the majority of agents out there. Um, so I'm in that situation. I know all the numbers and again, I'm assuming they're all as pre-qualified. Um, I would, I would number one, go back to the three and I would actually lift up some of my cards and I say, listen for, to the three, right? I'd say you guys are about 50 grand off. So you, you need to, you need to go and figure out if you're, if you know where you can come up to, right? So throw right. it back to them, see if we can come up, you know, get that, you know, close that 50 or close that six or whatever. So then once I get the three or I'm sorry, all four to, to, let's say I get them to the same spot or near the same spot. Then I'd say, listen, we talked about it. You know, there's still a little confusion. Uh, my, and I'd tell each of them, Hey, listen, uh, I really like yours, but you know, th- this one has or whatever, They're like, you know, but there's something desirable over here. And I'd say, you guys take three days and all of you come back with your highest and best. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's one strategy is to come back with the best and final counter offer. A lot of agents use that. Yeah, uh, you know, and and really this this negotiation process really starts with when you list the property, because I find when you list the property just a little bit below what we we think it's going to sell for, yeah. Yeah. that usually creates this frenzy and this bidding war, and we do get the multiple offers yep. when that happens. I mean, I've had one. I had 26 offers on one house. I had 50 some odd offers on another house. You know, many sales with 10 and 12 offers. You know, so this this happens a lot. And this is really, you know, counseling them from the beginning so that they don't overprice their house. Because the worst thing you can do is bring out a listing where it's overpriced and then you later have to go back and get a reduction. Whereas if you'd priced it right in the beginning and you build up the suspense and, you know, we put verbiage in the MLS. You know, we're not going to be reviewing offers until after the brokers open and the public open. And we leave it, you know, some time for p- people to come in and see the house. And then everybody's milling about at the open house and seeing everybody else that's interested. And, and that's generally how you get the auction going and you get the bids over asking. And again, nobody really knows what the other people are offering. So, you know, it, it sometimes you 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 might have one really low ball offer and then one really great offer and then the great offer doesn't know they're just competing against somebody who's way lower right and so you counter them and they come up you know because really they don't know who they're competing against but so when you get the multiple offers it's good because if you underprice it, you're going to most likely get multiple offers. So it gives you that option to try to drive the price up. Now, Whereas if you overprice it, you might get lowball offers and or you may not get any offers. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. Listen, I have had, I've done that. I've played with all those, you know, using a big range where the starting range is, you know, 50K under the, the value, right? Um, I've had people yell at me. Right, because I, I list the property. You know, let's say I list it for a number. Let's two seventy nine, for example, whatever it is. Right, <clears throat> and, but that is ten grand under, or fifteen or twenty grand under. Right, I, I want to generate interest. I've had people write me that offer for two seventy nine, uh, and then when I don't take it, like I've had people get crazy at me. I mean, yell at me like I like like so mad that I was worried that they were going to go in the house because these were vacant houses, uh, and like bust it up. I mean, that's how you know. I mean, have you ever had that experience, or is no, that just me? No, we don't have that experience. I mean, we're dealing at a higher price point here, point here in our, you know, my area. Got it. So, we, yeah, we definitely don't have that. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, that, maybe it's just me, too. All right. Well, so listen. So you have been at this for 40 years. You've seen tons of people come and go. Uh, you know, and you've seen you've seen the, the person who has been mediocre for the last 15 years. Um, you know, for the new people out in the audience right now or the aspiring people that want to get to your success, you know, is there one thing, is there one hurdle that you that you really need to jump? And uh, and once you get past that hurdle, you're like you're it's smooth sailing a little bit. Uh, I think that, you know, really, it's just going back to the basics. It's the, when I first got my license, you know, I was told what to do. And when you're new, you do all those things. And then, you know, after you've been in the business a while, a lot of, I've noticed a lot of agents just kind of slack off and they just don't do it. But if you go back to the basics, it just always works. So you have to do some type of prospecting, whether that's a geographical farm or a sphere of influence or you're door knocking, or you sit on open houses, all of these things work. So you have to pick something that works for you and be consistent because it's not going to happen overnight. You have to be consistent. So in the area where I work, for example, I work a geographical you know, farm, and I am real visible in the area. I've really branded myself. So my signs are all over the place. My bus benches are you know, up and down the boulevard. I have a, a banner up at a local school at a little league. Um, I'm active at the Chamber of Commerce. I have a, an on-screen ad at the movie theater oh in the gosh. area. Yeah, so it's like they can't not see me. Um, I have open houses throughout the area and sold signs and, you know, signs of listings in the area. So I'm very visible. So they know who I am. And it's just it's just, you know, it's, you had to start somewhere, and, you know, I started with a smaller area, and then just it kept expanding it to, to what it is now. And, of course, you know, after you've been doing it a while, you get a lot of repeat business and referrals, and when you sell one house, then the neighbor calls, and you send out a postcard, and, you know, it's like every month. They get a postcard, they look at it, and they throw it in the trash. They get it next month, look at it, throw it in the trash, and it really almost doesn't matter what the postcard says, but... In five years or in 10 years, you know, I get calls all the time and they say, you know, I've been getting your card for years and now we're thinking about selling. So I want to be one of the ones they call. I mean, I have competitors, but I want to be one of the ones they call when they're thinking about selling. And, you know, of course, I don't get every listing, but I, you know, I try to get as many of, as, as I can, of course, but, you know, they're, they're, they're competitive people, but there's enough business to go around for everybody. So... Um, I'm also very, very friendly with all the agents, you know, that I've been working with that work in different offices. And I think it's really important that you have a good relationship with all of your, you know, peers. I think that you never know who's going to be on the other end of the deal. And you should just always have, you know, there's some agents that that develop a, a very bad reputation and nobody wants to work with them. I like to be thought of the agent that that they want to work with. They want to bring their buyers to my listings. Yeah, and I, I look. I would like to. I would. I want to know what that looks like. What that person looks like. But b- before we get there, I want to talk about your farm. So you know, you, you you what you said, Carol. Was you said you have to be. You have to have active. You have to, sorry. You have to be prospecting, right? Actively, right? Grow your farm. Actively, right? Get in your sphere. So for you, I'm sure you did farm and sphere at the same time. Um, but uh, so tell us about how your you. How did you start your farm, and then and then then you expanded it, of course. How- well, I just picked the neighborhood where I lived initially. Okay. And there were there were about a hundred, I think, five hundred and fifty houses, and you know, I started farming there, and then I've expanded it, and now I farm probably like six thousand homes. Oh my month. god! Yeah. So. So you have a big, you have a, a giant. I mean, if you're sending out six thousand mailers, I mean, that's a that's a big budget every month. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they they get it every month. Like I said, you know, most people it just goes in the trash, but it's just branding. It's they see yeah. your name. They don't really know where they see it. Right. But I know when I go on appointments and, and and they say, "Oh yeah, I saw you." You know, they don't think about really where they saw you, but it could be on signs, it could be when they went to the movie or it could be on the bus bench or whatever, but it's just that that I'm there. But that doesn't happen overnight. You do have to start out with something, and whether it is a geographical farm or a sphere, it could be a sphere. I mean, if you have a large sphere of people that that you know, you farm them, and you know, past clients, and you know, there's different types of farming. It doesn't have to be what I do. 
Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Right. So, and, you know, so he's like sitting on open houses can be a way for a new agent to, to pick up clients that right, right. are in a neighborhood, uh, inviting the neighbors to the open house. It's all the things, you know, like I said, going back to the basics. And the thing is, Carol, you know, most people, they think, oh, hey, look, I don't have a sphere, right? I don't know very many people, but... But if they really, you know, went and said, "Listen, everybody I used to work with, right? Everybody that I that I know from church, everybody exactly. that that my kids, mm -hmm. you know, the 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 parents of the ki my kids, you know, who do they know? So people have a sphere; they just don't realize it. Um, I, I don't know if you want to re tell me this, but <clears throat> so you have an ad at the movie theater. I think that's you're the first person that's come on the show that has has said that. Um, uh, how much is that? If you don't want to tell me, that's okay. Um, I honestly have to look it up. I don't remember. <laughs> <I think. laughs> All right. I think it's about. I think it's about six thousand a year. Wow. Uh, okay. It's just a. It's a. It's a. Before the movie starts, it's they have a series of of ads, yeah. and it's very, it's a very quick ad. You know, it, it runs very you know quick, but it basically. It's uh, it just shows my name and my phone number and you know my website and it you know that I'm in real estate so uh, and then you know I have brochures in the movie theater in the in the lobby you know that they let us put in there and there have been other agents who have, have right now there's one other agent who's running an ad in there and over the years there have been others I've been doing it about five years at this particular theater but before that I did it at another theater and then that theater changed hands so. I mean, I, th I think it's good. I mean, it's, you know, it may not be for everybody, but it's it's a combination of of everything. It's the reinforcement. It's like, why does Coca-Cola advertise or Pepsi? I mean, everybody knows what it is. Yeah. But it's like when you hear it, it's the su it's the subtlety of of hearing your name or seeing your name, and it's it's a part of the branding. So yeah. over the years, I've you know branded myself with with these different things that I've done. And, and what I love about what you're doing is, you know, uh, so the ads in the movie theaters is, you know, you're even still doing bus bench, or you're not doing bus benches anymore, are you? I am. You are. And actually, I just started doing bus benches. I never had bus benches because every time I called, they were all taken. And then I think, you know, about a year ago, I was able to finally get some. And I think a lot of the agents who used to have them, they stopped because they, the price got a little bit, you know, got pricey. So I decided to try it. So I have five benches right now in my farm area. How are you? Tra so, so are you tracking? Like, do you know? Like, the, when people call you at the movie theater or people call you from the bus bench, are you tracking that? Do you know what kind no, of engagement? You okay. can't really track that. It, and, and again, I don't think anybody's going to call me and say, you know, I saw your bus bench and I want to sell my house, or I Got saw it. you at the yeah. movie theater. It's that they get my card every month, and you know, they, I've kind of become like almost a celebrity. And I mean, I hate to say that I'm I'm not really you know into that. But when I am at an open house, let's say, and and people come in that live in the area, oh, it's Carol Wolf, it's one a week. We see you all over the place. You know, it's like they know who I am because of all of these things that I've reinforced what I'm doing. So it's 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 the branding, right? No, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. I I mean, I just I and I love that. And you know, you said earlier, you said everybody has to start somewhere. You know, somebody can't come in and, uh, you know, that's, it doesn't happen overnight. How long before you started to see, you know, I, I think if you thought about your business going back, you know, 35 years ago or, thir you know, a long time ago, mm -hmm. when did you sort of go like, uh, all this brandy is working? You know, I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure at some point it just tipped it where... Took, it took a long time. Well, I will say that, you know, I mean, when I started, I was in my early 20s, obviously, and, you know, I got married when I was 27, and I had kids, so I did a lot of those things you were talking about with, like, my, I, I did a lot of business from, you know, friends, parents, you know, ki you know kids uh, that were friends with my kids, you know, their parents, and I, you know, was 
visible in the school where they went to school and got a lot of business that way. And, you know, over the years, uh, it just, you know, the dynamics of the business just, just changed and I, I did a lot of farming. But I would say maybe, you know, when my kids got older and then I had more time to, de- to devote to it, maybe like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, I really, like it was at a time when I switched companies and I really put more effort into doing this and it just kept going and just expanding and uh, to where it is now. Got it. So- I also um, did some coaching for a while, which I had never done. And I also never had an assistant uh, until about maybe 15 years ago, and I did that. That was when I was coaching, and he said, you know, I I should have an assistant because I'm very hands-on. I mean, it happened to be, even though I've been doing this a long time and a lot of agents that are in my generation aren't very techy, but I happen to be very techy and very hands-on, and I oversee everything that I do, uh, even though I, you know, I do have a full-time licensed assistant. Uh, but I, um, I think that I changed a lot of things that I did, you know, when I was coaching. Uh, one of the things was I started to charge more and I charge more than most of the agents in my area. And, uh, so it. I'm worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I get them more money, so I'm worth it. Um, and I find a lot of agents, you know, are willing to work for a very low fee, and uh, and I'm not. And maybe I lose some business be- because of that. But doesn't I doesn't matter. You, I, you I get plenty of business, and you know, it, and I think I definitely feel the value is there that I get them more money than an agent who doesn't have the experience. Right. Right. I agree. So, so earlier, and you know, you kind of started off this whole interview. You said, Hey, you know, you go back to basics. And if I, if I look at like what you're doing, you know, all this, this marketing stuff that you're doing today, it is very basic, right? I mean, it is. It, absolutely. And it's yeah. working for you. Yeah. Farming is working. Door knocking is working. I mean, any of these things that are the basic things when you first get your license, they tell you to do. And I remember when I was a newbie and I remember doing all these things in the beginning, I, I did well in the very beginning. Uh, and that's because I did what I was told to do. <laughs> right. And, and I still do it. And if I, if I didn't do it, if I dropped the ball, I mean, sure, I would get some business just because, you know, I, I'm there and they know who I am. But I, I have to keep doing it. And I feel like I have to still keep thinking of new ideas and uh, new innovative things to do, you know, to get my name out there. Yeah, well, I mean, because look, the people that you know, you know, it, it, your farm is transient, right? People come in, come out, so you know, you have to continue that the, to to claim your spot as the top dog out there, Carol. So you, you know, so you're a techie person. Uh, I hear all this very offline stuff, bus benches, and you know, uh, uh, door. Do you still door knock? You do you walk down the street? I have done it. Um, I haven't done it recently, okay. but I am going to be doing it again. <laughs> yeah, it works. It is good. It really yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It really does work. And I found when I did it that I would knock on the door and they go, oh, Carol Wolf, I feel like I know you. You know, yeah. it. yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, there's always a couple people who slam the door and they're not interested, but most of the people are really friendly and nice and, and they'll talk to you. Yeah, well, everybody has a bad so, day every now and again. Sure. So. Um, and, and door knocking is, you know, it's interruption based marketing. So, you know, you, the, you, maybe the guy's wife was just yelling at him. Um, um, so what about like, you know, people, you, you, when you get to somebody's door, they go, Oh, that's Carol. They instantly recognize you cause your face is everywhere and they feel like you, they know you. Do you couple this hyper local marketing? Do you, do you insert social media in, in that mix to, to further? I do. Okay. And my company does a lot with that too. Um, we, you know, we, we put everything on Facebook and my company also, and we, we do a lot of, uh, you know, email blasts and, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're doing more and more with that because obviously that's where everybody is marketing. What about web leads? What about, um, Zillow and Trulia? Do you do any marketing on those places? Um, I mean, my listings are on there, but I have not paid to be on there. Um, you know, I, I think there are, people who do really well with those. Yeah. So I, I'd say, you know, that's not a bad thing to do. You know, I just think you have to find what you like doing and just do it. Just, you know, like I said, back to the basics, whether you, you know, want to 
do pay for leads on Zillow or Tulia, uh, or you want to farm or door knock or, you know, there. I don't think you should do everything. I think you should pick something that you want to do and do it, cons- you know, consistently and yeah. do it well. Right, right, right. And look, and, and things like that, you know, door knocking, marketing to your sphere, the, the things that you mentioned, uh, it's all free. So, you know, a new person can go out and they can start that with like two bucks in their pocket. Yeah. I mean, you can, for example, let's say you pick an area that you want to have do a geographic farm. So find a listing that's in that area and ask that agent if you can sit on it for them on the, on the weekend. Then send a postcard or door knock the neighborhood around the house, invite them all to the open house. And then follow up on that afterwards. And, you know, and then hopefully maybe you'll get a listing in the neighborhood and then it, it snowballs after that. You know, you start out with one, then they say your sold sign, neighbors you send up, you know, just listed, just sold. It's all the basic things. Now, is that okay? Is it okay? So let's say you're Century 21 and there's a guy in my farm that, that is Sotheby's. Is it okay for me to go to, to do that, to sit in on a, the, an other? Well, we don't, we don't know. If, if they don't work for our company, we don't allow them to sit on our open house. I just think that's kind of a confusing thing. And we, we, always, we have plenty of people in our own company who want to sit on houses. So I'm, I'm saying, you know, if you work at a company, find somebody in your office that has a listing, you know, maybe somebody, you know, that, that's, that's a big producer that has a lot of listings and ask them to sit on one of their listings and, you know, and work in that area. Yeah, no, I, no, I totally understand that. I just, you know, I, I think that, you know, if, uh, um, if there's, I've gotten this question a lot where people say, Hey, there's nobody in my company that, that has a listing in my general area. And, uh, you know, uh, but there is one big guy, but he works for another company. And I, and I really don't know the answer to give. I don't well, know the right if, answer. If, you know, I mean, if they want to try it, I, I, and the agent will let them do it. I mean, I guess it's okay, but I, you know, I think that if people come into the house that are neighbors, they're going to be confused by that. If, you know, you're going to try to get a listing, you know, they, they may ask you, why are, why are you with that company, but not that, you know. Yeah, You're not with the, you know, so that and I get I maybe it, maybe it would be you know I mean you are at the higher end but you know maybe at the three hundred to five hundred piece of you know the, yeah it wouldn't that like could that work so and then I mean if you are going to send out postcards one of the most more effective postcards is to send out to an area or a door knocking piece is to let them know what is selling in their neighborhood because everybody always wants to know that. And, you know, there are agents who send out posts, even if you don't have a listing. I mean, you can send out a, a, a mailing saying, you know, here are the homes that have sold in your neighborhood. I mean, you do have to put a disclaimer that they're not your sales you know, in the fine print. I mean, at least in our area we do. But, but a lot of people don't look at the fine print. And so they right. see a list of sales and they, they could, for all they know, they could be your sales. Right. I'm not saying you're, that you're lying because, of course, if they ask you, you know, you know, I was just letting you know what the activity is in the area. This is, you know, all the activity. You know, these are all the sales. So, you know, you, you let them know. But a lot of times they don't even pick up on that, and they, they'll call you. And, you know, I know some of the agents in our office that are newer send out that type of piece. And I, and I think it's pretty effective. Yeah, and, and, the, and, and you know, I would think, right, and this is, this is, I have some coaching students, and, you know, when we talk about these kind of cards or mailers, I always say, hey, go pick, you know, go shoot a picture. Get a picture on the front of that card that when they see that card, they know it's in that area, you know, their area. Because if I get a card and, I, you know, it's of downtown condos, I'm going to, I won't even... I'll just throw it. But if I see, you know, my my neighborhood kind of, I know what it looks like. So if I see, right. you know, I'm gonna go. Oh, I'll turn it over and uh, just That's happened. True. Yeah, it just happened to me the other day. Yeah. I, I I noticed a house. I got a call uh, a card, and it was a house that that I knew was like on the next couple of street over. And I called the guy, and I, and I talked. You know, we had a nice twenty minute chat. Um, so for you, Carol, you know. Back to the basics, all that stuff. You know, if you had to start over, and I know that you know, knowing all the stuff that you know now, um, w- would you do anything differently, or or what would you do? No, I don't think I would do anything differently. I think I'm doing the same thing that I did when I first started. Right. So for you, let, let's talk about let's talk about how you stay focused on a day to day basis. I mean, you have you know, you you're this ultra mega producer. Uh, you have a tons of things going on. What does your ideal day look like? How do you structure your day? You know, it's funny. A lot of people don't even come into the office. I mean, I have an office in my house. I could work at home, but, 
you know, I don't want to be distracted. So I come into the office every day, you know, Monday through Friday. I'm here. I'm usually one of the only agents who's here, <laughs> but I'm always here. And I try to uh, get in, you know, to the office, you know, 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And then, you know, I have a lot of calls, emails, uh, appointments. You know, I have several listing appointments a week, you know, generally. Uh, we have, you know, open houses, and um, sometimes my appointments go into the evening. I work really, really hard. I work long hours. When I go home, I'm working at, at home as well. Uh, I do take vacations, so I uh, and I take several, so I, you know, reward myself and get out of town whenever I can. Uh, but I'm very focused, and I'm I find that it, without the distractions and coming in that. You know, and I also do prospecting, so I will try to call past clients and uh, people that I've had you know appointments with. Some you know sometimes people call and they just want to know what their house is worth, and you know they're may maybe going to sell in two years or three years. So I have a file drawer full of all those appointments, and I try to go through those every once in a while. Well, are you ready now? You know, right. <laughs> remember I met you last year, and you were thinking of selling. And usually, when I do that, and I go through the drawer, I usually end up getting a couple listings because you know now they're ready. You're kidding me. You have a you have a drawer that you just sometimes go through, <laughs> and when you well, do, it's, it's a list of files of all the people that I've gone on listing appointments. Let's say in the last year. Got it. So, uh, or or two years, and if I call them like uh, a few times, like a few years, and they just are not interested, after a few years, I'll just throw it away. But if if it's somebody who I think is you know going to be potentially selling in the next couple of years, then I call them. So I'll, I'll tell you about a couple of things. So way back when, when I did door knock, I used to pass out scratch pads and calendars and things like that. Yeah. And uh, another good thing I think to pass out, which I just had made, are the you know the market shopping uh, market bags because they charge now for them in our market. So I had those printed with my name on them. So I'm gonna uh, I was planning to pass those out you know in the area because they have my name. So they go to the market. You know they'll be advertising me when they go shopping. Um, so there was a listing uh, that I got a few years ago. And the man called me up and he said, uh, you know, my father just passed away. And I was cleaning out his safe deposit box and your scratch pad was in there. He said, I think my dad was trying to tell me something. So he was in the house with me. <laughs> and then I had another one where um, there was a woman who called me about uh, finding out what her house was worth. And I went out and saw her. And then every year... I would call her, you know, she was in the drawer, and I'd call her to see if she was ready. And every year I called her, and she'd say, no, I'm not ready. And about five or six years later, I called, and a man answered the phone. And she was a single woman. She was a doctor, actually. And I was surprised because, you know, somebody answered the phone, and I said, hi, is Kathy there? And he said, Kathy died two weeks ago. Anyway, what I found out was is when she initially had me out, she knew she was dying and she had cancer and she wanted to know what her house was worth and she wanted to have her affairs in order. And uh, this man answered the phone and he asked me who I was and I told him and he said, that's really, really funny. I was going to call you. And I said, really, why? And he said, she had me in, in the will that I was going to be the agent when she died, that she wanted me to sell her house. So that was just, um, you know, a testament to, I guess I made a good impression on her, and she wanted me to be her agent, and again, it was just as a result of seeing her, you know, five or six years earlier. Amazing. So, Amazing. yeah, those are a couple of stories that I really, you know, are special to me. And so, so it was written in a know. will, and I was in a safe deposit box. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just, you know, you just never know. You know, you do, as long as you try to, you know, add value to, to you know, be servant-hearted, you just never know. And I, I, I think that uh, thanks for sharing. Those were great, great stories. Well, listen, we are going to wrap it up. Um, uh, again, you know, m my audience here, and by the way, Kathy, I'm sorry, you were saying Kathy, Carol. Um, we are in about 50 countries now, so uh, your voice will be broadcast. A lot of people are going to be listening to this. 
Uh, Great. So, yeah, so we have top producers that listen to the show, uh, and I urge you to start listening. There's good, good content in there. What about, do you have an internet tool that, uh, like an Evernote that you're in love with that you can share? An internet tool? Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. We use the Dropbox. Okay. Uh, we have all of our files on the Dropbox so that wherever I am, uh, I can access, I, I mean, I can be out in the field and I can use my phone and if somebody wants to know something, I can just go right into any file and look up any piece of paper that's associated with that file. Yeah. That, any, uh, any, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. It's, you know, obviously a, a cloud storage uh, tool, but yeah. I, we like that a lot. It's like Google Drive. You can you Google Drive Dropbox and Google Drive is free from, uh, they give you a little bit extra storage for free in the beginning. Um, what about, do you have a personal habit that you feel has contributed to your success? I have a, a sign in my office that I look at every day when I come into the office and it says, business is great, people are terrific, life is wonderful. And there I look you go. at that every day when I come in. That is fantastic. Hey, Carol, thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, let everybody know. Uh, My where pleasure. They, tell, tell the audience where they can find you. I will. Let it, give it to them. Thank you so much. No, wait, Carol. Uh, I'll edit it out, out too. Uh, do you want to tell people your website address or, or where they can reach you? Sure. Okay. Uh, my website is carolwolf.com. It's C-A-R-O-L-W-O-L-F-E.com. And my slogan is nobody does it better because I strive to do the very best job for my clients. Nobody does. That's great. So no, nobody does yeah, it's the old better. Carly, it's the old Carly Simon song. But Got yeah, it. It's, <laughs> it's on everything that I do. It's on my postcards. It's, it's on everything. Cool. Well, hey, again, thanks for taking the time out, coming on the show, and uh, everybody out in the audience. If you've enjoyed it, Carol's story, you know, reach out to her and, uh, you know, send her a note and say thanks for taking the time out and, uh, you know, sharing her story with you. So, again, thanks so much, Carol. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. See ya. Let's go.